What's going on, YouTube? It's your man, The Hustle Hunter. I'm back at it again. Check this out. I had a few requests of some people who got some of my software who's interested in learning how to work it, but they can't really work it. So they was like, hey, man, help me out. You know what I'm saying? Make a little video. You know what I'm saying? So I can get this quick because I can't find it nowhere on YouTube. So I was like, all right, bet. So, uh, first, my software is called Vinyl Master. And if you didn't know, I am the Hustle Hunter 365, 24 7, seven days a week, however you want to put it. I might have to get the bread any way possible. I had my own little t shirt business, and it's been going good for three, three and a half, maybe four years. Started off as a little side hub hobby. And, you know, now it's my hustle for when I can, you know. I ain't going to say I do them all the time, but I do it when I feel like it. You know, it's, it's something that's just always there to make me a little side money. But anyway, the software I use is Vinyl Master Cut. It's for the U.S. cutter. Uh, you know, it's you can get it on eBay for about 69 bucks. I think I got mine off eBay for about 69 bucks, 59 bucks. But, you know, it's it's fairly cheap. If you find it, you, you can find it. eBay, Amazon, it don't matter. Just search for it. Okay, we're going to get right into it. Uh, it's the little icon at the bottom that looks like a little pin once you got your software downloaded. Uh, for me, these will be all your different little projects. For if you're very first new coming here, you're going to, of course, go new document. But since me, I already got stuff up, boom. I use this one sheet for everything that I got. All my shirt designs, everything, I figure ain't no sense of opening up multiple ones for one because it saves it all. So I was like, to hell with it. I'm just going to put all my work on one. And that's what I did. Uh, let's let it load up real quick. Okay, I'm going to zoom in just to show you some of the work I've done. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Okay. As you can see over here, oh, okay, we're back up. Okay, from here we have like a little Disney deal. And I just have a sample of these shirts on here for, if I was making a shirt for a client, I would uh, put it on the shirt and then, you know, take pictures of my screen to show them, hey, this is what your shirt looks like. As you see, there's my logo there, which I made that with this software. And of course my phone. I do a lot of these designs on my phone, which if you have a phone that has a silhouette, I mean, the, the pen, I can I said silhouette, but that's how I started off anyway with the silhouette. So that's on my mind. Plus, I'm looking at this. That's a silhouette. So, uh, yeah, uh, I started off on my phone with the pen, making up designs. And from my phone, I have an image and I transfer it to my computer. And then, boom, this is how I make majority of all my shirts. Uh, but let's just say, let's get to a little blank side part. Let me take you a little scroll. I've made things for family reunions, motorcycle clubs, uh, families that was going to Disney, uh, my own personal one. I have some more Disney ones straight out of Houston. Uh, I have some swagged up shirts. I have a I have a lot of them. As you can see, I have even more shirts up here. Uh, let's scroll up so you can see a few of them. You know, uh, I did birthday parties with the P PJ mask. I never knew what the hell that was until then. But that was very fun. Stayed up all night doing them. It was like four or five shirts. I have the, uh, I don't even know who the hell they are. Uh, puppy patrol, dog patrol. Hey, somebody help me out. Y'all know who it is. I don't know who it is. Um, I have some for the gay pride deal. I did that. I have all kinds of shirts. I have all kinds. This, my whole little page here is full of things that I've done. Top to bottom. I've done football shirts, football jerseys. The list can go on and on for the things I made. I even did a little Toy Story theme. Uh, I did my own little personal. I have some of these shirts on my little personal favorites. 
I I've made a little some of everything. You see, I, this, this whole program is just full of all of my designs. Let's go up. This is how I made a lot of stuff. See all these. This went to a church deal, which that was pretty big for me. Uh, have friends that have their own logo. I put on a shirt for them. Uh, I have a little some of everything that I do. Uh, my latest deal of working with will be this right here. This is for my bike. Uh, most of y'all have seen this print, and yes, it is the Louis Vuitton print. I just took out the LV, and I put in the Habusa sign in there, and then boom, threw me some dollar signs in there, which you probably can't see, but it's okay. Uh, that's what it originally looked like with the Habusa sign, and uh, I took out the Louis Vuittons, like I said. Boom, this is my current project. I'm going to put this on my bike. I'm in the process of doing that now. But uh, let's let's get into it because enough blabbing on this other stuff. So let's start off with finding a little clear piece. And what I do is just scoot to the side. That's all I do. Boom. Now, if you're going to grab your image offline, let's get online. Let's look up something just so we could see and so I can show you how to do it. First, uh, you see I already got typed in a uh, mechanic silhouette. Silhouettes are your best. Things starting off, in my opinion, those were the easiest for me. Uh, only because you see it's a solid image. Like starting off with the solid image was great for me. Ooh, I kind of like this monster truck deal, but hey, let's do this flames. I like I like flames. So let's find some good flames. Oh, I'm finding a few things that I like. Okay, I'm trying to get sidetracked on you. Uh, we'll just say these flames right here. Fairly simple. Well, there's nothing to it. That is simple. So me, I would right click it. I'll save picture as. And where it has a little icon, I'll just save it as flames. And I would hit the save button. Okay, from there, it should have saved to my computer. Sometimes it do, sometimes it don't. I don't know what's wrong with the technology at times. Okay, but from here we go back to our software. We're gonna go up to the top where it says images and we're gonna go to import image. Make sure I got that correct. Yeah, import images. Okay, now we're gonna find that image that we just had. Half of these images you see now. Oh, you just seen that one that I had. No, you seen that one. That's the one I had on my software here. But uh, half of these images, believe it or not, all of these are actually on this page that are actually images, images. Some of them are pictures that's in my personal computer. But uh, let's try to find the one that we just put in there. And hopefully it's here somewhere. not there let me go to my pictures it might be here somewhere warning I have a lot of images that I've gotten off the line over the past years and I do need to clean this out believe it or not let's just scroll to the bottom I believe it might be down there uh, I don't see it It's here somewhere. I need to delete a lot of this. Some things will be gone soon. I'm sorry for y'all to see all of this because uh, it's a lot of work I've been working over the years, ideas. I get a little some of everything and I was just putting it on the computer just so I could see what it looks like. Actually putting it on shirts making my own designs, making other people's designs. This is what I did. Uh, oh, wow. Where, okay, there go the flames. Whew, develop. All right, I got my flames. Boom, boom. I'm going to put my image there. As you see, I click down and I just made the image bigger. That's, that's nothing. That's not a problem. You can make it as however big you want. I just put it there. 
Now, if you went to this little icon that looked like a pen and clicked it, of course, it's going to say there's nothing to cut. Why? Because this image ain't on the computer yet. Software. So let's go here to images and we're going to go to vectorize. Boom, you click it. it it's going to draw it up for you pretty much. For me, it's going to say trace mode. I like going to logo, hitting the logo button, then I hit the trace again just so I could trace it. Okay, we're having the image problem tracing this image. I don't know if we'll be able to trace this image only because of that. Uh, let's it, it, uh, apparently it already traced it, but let's see if we hit it. Okay, that is my image. If we go into wire mode, you can see only those lines. So apparently it didn't trace that image too well, and that's not your fault. That's just the image that we got offline. It wasn't the best image to be using, which. Hey, you do run into that problem occasionally, like you can't get around it. Okay, here's another one. Let's try it. We'll right click, save. It's save as candle flame silhouette. Boom, we're just gonna save it as what it already is. Let's go back to our software. Let's go back up to images. Let's go to open. And it should be here somewhere. Unfortunately, we have to find it. Oh no, I can. You can search for flame. Uh, no, I doubt if we can search for it because I can't remember the name that I just saved it as. Oh, sorry. I don't pay attention to those things like that. Uh, unless I rename it myself. But I know it says something about flame silhouette something. But it's okay. I'm going to quickly try to find it so I can show y'all what it looks like. I've done a lot of work. Is that the flame? No, that's not the flame. That's the old flame. I did Elmo shirts, Texan shirts, all type of football shirts. I did vehicle shirts. Okay, there's the flame. Found it. I got it, y'all. I'm going to get it, and I'm going to blow it up to a nice size so you can see. That's my flame. From there, we're going to go to image. We're going to go to vectorize slash trace. It draws the image from here. I can actually keep it default, but me, I'm just gonna say, hey, a logo, because that's normally what I set it on. It doesn't make a difference, I don't believe. But if you're doing logos, click logos. If you're doing letters, click letters. Uh, from here, it drew it, accept it, boom. That's what it looks like. From there, right, like right now we're in wire mode, so if I was to cut, this is what it'll be cutting. Let's get back to the original mode, which that's this little icon down here. If you follow my mouse, you see. Let's make it a solid view. That's what it'll actually look like. But if I was going to cut view, this is what the cut view looks like. And it shows that it's actually on my software. If it wasn't, you wouldn't see that. Okay, now from here, if we want to cut, we just hit the cut sign up at the top. And boom, look, it, it wants to cut. Now, apparently, it says this image is too big. For my software, so we're gonna get out of that. And I'm wondering why is it too big? Let's shrink this bad boy down a little bit. But apparently it was showing too big on my software here. Okay. Well, that's only because the images you see 19 inches, and yeah, that's too big. Yeah, it it even shows you up here how big it actually is. So let me pan the camera over just a little bit, let you see it. Okay. 19, you know, that, that's fairly too big. That's only because we're zoomed in on my screen itself. But that's how you pretty much get it. From there, you go to your little cutter, and boom, that's how you cut it. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Understand if you're making shirts, you have to mirror your image. When it says mirror all, you have to mirror everything that go on a shirt. I can't point this out enough when i was first learning this i i was stuck i was pretty much doing everything by myself so i had burnt a lot of money a lot of material a lot of shirts a lot of time just figuring trying to learn this so hopefully you don't run into that problem so uh, if you're doing shirts always make sure you mirror, mirror your object please that's the most important thing you can do also, if you're doing sticker decals, car decals, 
signs. If you're doing anything else, do not mirror it. Just keep it, keep that icon clicked off. So click on for shirts, click off for everything else. On for shirts, off for everything else. Uh, another thing, uh, of course, this image is big, but you see if, if I hit the rotate button, let's just say, uh, let me exit out of this. I'm going to make this image a little bit smaller so I can show you. Uh, boom. It's like three inches now. Like That's extremely small. Okay. Uh, almost four inches. Which, back here, I'm going to boom. I'm going to rotate it. Let's say if I want to cut maybe 20 of these. I, you have a choice to either have it horizontal or vertical. Horizontal or vertical. Me, if I was cutting 20 of these, I would possibly have it vertical. Only because you can have more lined up in a row you know so it'll be easier for you to just cut 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 and boom you can cut them all out and also save paper because at the end of the day the paper can get expensive especially when starting off you burn through so much paper i can't tell you how much paper i've burned through but i have a whole bucket up under my desk here that i've i have all type of paper of practice cuts repractice cuts everything so uh this is what it'll look like when it's time for you to cut if your cutter is hooked up. Of course, you can see I have a U.S. cutter. It's MH871. Uh, I got that off of Craigslist. I found a female who was selling one. I got it for a great deal. Like I said, it was like three, maybe four years ago. I think I spent like 150 bucks. At that time, this cutter was going for like three, 400 bucks. And, you know, this was just a little hobby of me just starting off. So I was like, hey, I'll try it. Uh, I got it for a pretty good deal. And this cutter has made me a lot of money. Like, you wouldn't believe it. I've made so much money off of this cutter. And it's been doing an excellent job with me. Matter of fact, I've, I have a cutter. I have a printer. I also have two presses. I have a, a big press. A big box press and then I also have a portable press I take with me occasionally if I need to step out I cut all my material here and then step to where I need to go to and actually make the shirts on the go so it's kind of convenient but right here I have this cutter here it's kind of big so I can't really just take it with me it's not very portable like the little cameo silhouettes but again it gets the job done okay let's get back into this so if you have you was cutting multiple, of course, quantity, you click it and boom. If you were making a shirt, of course, you'd have that mirror button on. Me, I go to my cutter control and I leave the blade offset. I leave it to where it's set at. I really don't mess with it. You can, but hey, it's just what you feel comfortable with. Me, I've learned on passes, it's always best to do two passes. Why? Because I've been in a series where I was making shirts and boom, I was just cutting, 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 cutting and going, just going, just going. I cut a shirt and I'll be weeding it, making a shirt, putting everything down and be cutting another shirt. And I've came across some where sometimes it cut it, but it didn't cut it out completely. Therefore, it made weeding a bitch. Like, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm sorry. It made it in hell. So, uh, my advice is if you're going to cut multiple images, especially if it's a small image like the flame here, uh, just cut it twice. So it would be no problem just to, you know, cut it twice, put the little two up there and boom, just to cut. Uh, I, I just like guaranteeing that it cuts. Now, if your needle is set too far, then, of course, you will cut through your vinyl paper. Uh it is very thin. It is very easy to cut through it. But if your needle is set right, you can cut on normal vinyl paper two, maybe three times. And it won't cut through the paper, which that will be a good thing. Uh, but yeah, it depends on the thickness of your paper, which they have all type of thicknesses of papers that you can use. But uh, that, that's pretty much what I use. See, my media width is media width. Sorry about that. Can't talk right now. But as you can tell, it's 158 in the morning. And I'm trying to get this out there. Uh, this is the amount of width on my media. This is how much I can actually cut on my cutter. On cameo cutters, 
will be a much smaller because they are much smaller. But like I said, I have an industrial size cutter and my cutter actually looks like this. So, boom, that's how it is. The media is how much paper I can actually put on there and actually cut. So if I was cutting this image and doing 20 of them, I wouldn't really use as much paper. But uh, yeah, uh, any of your other settings on here, of course, here's my job name. This is the, the program that I actually clicked on, which I call it my now shirts. So yours will be named whatever yours is when you start your new document and name it as something. Uh, the advance after the plot, that's basically stating after it's done cutting it, do you want the plotter to... Let's say it starts cutting here and then it'll finish cutting here. Now, when it's done, when it's finished, it'll cut and then it'll restart right here. So it'll be ready for your next cut for the next thing that you're cutting. Me, I tend to don't go by that. I tend to move my needle and place it where I want to place it because I believe in saving paper. And if you don't do it like that, sometimes it'll have a gap. And the little gap when you're trying to save paper makes a big difference, especially if you're cutting multiple images. Hope that made sense, but hey, if not, you'll get to understand what I'm talking about when you get to doing this. So, uh, yeah, uh, let me exit out of this and show you something else real quick. Let's go back to images because uh, I want to grab an image for you just to show you on a multiple image. If you're doing a like a multiple image logo, let's grab. I'm going to grab the Patriots logo here. Boom. I'm going to put them on. Now, remember, if I go to my cut sign up here, there's nothing to cut. I actually got to put the software on there. So, I'm going to go to Trace. Make sure whatever you trace, the icon is lit up. Now, as you see, this right here has four colors. But on here, it only states I have two colors. So, what we're going to do is click it up one. It got three colors now. Boom, click it up. It has four colors because that is correct. Four colors. Okay, from here, trace mode. I'm going to go to logo because it is a logo. Boom, it's going to trace it. Trace, trace. Boom, boom. Wow. Pretty simple. When you're doing colors, you can actually see. It gets more complicated when the colors get... Like there's 16 colors. Ooh, I've had some of them jobs. 16 colors and you had to mix and figure out and recreate. And ooh, it's a hassle. It, it comes with the job. You will come across some that, that need that extra attention. Okay, from here, it's already on the computer. Let's say you want to change the color or something. Make sure you have your image lit up. From here, I go to ungroup all. Once you click on group all and click off your image, click back on your image. Now you see I have one thing. I could take this and move this here. See, it's nothing. We're going to undo because I want to put it back there. Let's say if you want to change the color of it. Say uh, you have a customer and they want the pink, pink Patriots. Me, I'll light up everything they want pink. Let's say the tail part and boom, turn it pink. Let's say if they want the head up, let's undo because it kind of distorted it. Okay, let's see if they want the head. They want the head lime green. Boom. You can change the head lime green. Uh, if they say they want the face to be red, you can change the face red. Like It doesn't matter what color they want. You can change to any color that they want. Just remember, when you're done changing the color of what you want, you make sure you light it all up, light the whole image up. Go back up to the top to arrange. And then press group. Click off your image. And now you can click your image and move it. And you see it's not in pieces. It's all together. From here, let's say you want to cut it. Boom. Let's hit the cut button. Of course, my image is too big. Let me come down. Make this image smaller. Okay, it's 13 inches. Boom. Not bad. Uh, 13. This will be probably the size for a vehicle decal. 13 inches way too big for a shirt. Unless you're doing vertically or if you're having it hangover, going to the back of the sleeves of the shoulder or something like that, uh, which I wouldn't really recommend that. But hey, you could do it, whatever floats your boat and look good. OK, from here, I have this sep uh, separate by color icon off, which you can click this icon. Boom. And it'll separate it by color. Uh, I do this on most of my jobs. Trust me. 
when your jobs get higher in them colors, of course, that makes the product more expensive, but you're using more, I say, time and effort to actually do this. Remember, if it's baby green here, that's basically saying to me that I'm probably be using a, a green color vinyl. If it's pink, I'm most likely going to use a pink vinyl. If it's red, I'm most likely going to use a red vinyl. Uh, these colors that you pick on the computer don't necessarily have to be the color that you're cutting on. Just remember that anything that you're cutting will pretty much cut the color that you're cutting on your vinyl. This is just straight up. If you ain't separating your colors, you ain't got to separate them. If you're going to use black and you hit this button here, it's going to cut it all out together. Now, if you was cutting multiple ones of these, of course, I'd say in this situation to cut it like this because you'll save paper. Uh, it'll be 13 inches across and it'll be about six inches uh, inches widthwise. You could do it like that. If that suits you, that's better. That's cool. No problem. If you're just doing two of them, I, I'd recommend you doing that. Uh, just remember, if it's a vehicle decal, take your mirror off because you do not want a mirror. Your image will come up backwards and you can't use that paper or the vinyl. So it's basically will be trash from there unless you're going to use it for a shirt stencil like that will be useful. Uh, other than that, uh, make sure you're not vertically sending it because apparently you see how, how much bigger my paper has gotten. Uh, you'll be burning a lot of paper unless you're going to cut maybe three of these on there. Then that'll be understandable. But mm, I don't know what would be better if you was cutting it this way because it'll still be pretty much like 12 inches or 5, 10, 15. It'll be maybe 7, 18 inches of paper that you'll be cutting going that way. So I would honestly say cut this way. Instead of using 17, 18 inches, you'll be just using 13 and a half inches. So that's what I would do. But hey, you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, absolute position. I really don't worry about that. I keep it off, which you can go more in depth with that. Uh, registration marks. If you have registration marks in your image, It'll cut your image and your registration marks if you're like placing or aligning something exactly on a shirt. Me, I do that occasionally in screen printing because uh, you need to actually have things straightened and lined up correctly, especially if you're dealing with multicolors. Uh, but if you're just actually just going, you ain't got to worry about that. Uh, to make my life a little bit easier, uh, I never have the auto speed weed on. I always have the auto weed box because... You see, when you take the image off, it, you're just cutting the image. But if you have this weed box on, you're actually cutting the box around the image. To me, that makes it a little bit easier for when it's time to actually cut the image from the vinyl. I, I just cut the square out and then I just weed the square out and boom, I have my image. But also, if you're trying to get it straight on the shirt, which I might have to create that in another video, you can actually fold your paper in half. Just to make sure your image is actually straight on your shirt. Get the, if you find the center of your shirt and you split this image in half, you'll be able to find the middle of the shirt. You feel me? The middle of your shirt and the middle of your image. So the middle of that will be maybe like halfway here. You know what I'm saying? If you put that in the middle of your shirt, then you know your image is actually centered on your shirt. So I always keep the weed box on if I'm doing nice size jobs. You don't always have to, because, of course, if I was doing a little writing in here, of course, I would have that off if I was going to have the Patriots, because I would cut this and I'd probably go back and reline my needle and then put, you know, Patriots here. If I was cutting multiple Patriots, I'd do that so I won't so I could still use that vinyl and I wouldn't worry about the square that's going around it. So that's your preference on the weed box. It's no big deal if you have it or don't have it. Uh, down here, when it says weed text, uh, it's mainly if you're having letters. Uh, uh, it didn't say, it, excuse me, it didn't say weed text. It meant weld text. Weld text is basically putting your image and making it one. Let's see if we can burn through that real quick so I can show you. Uh, uh, let's make this bigger so you can see. Okay, and we're just going to do ASD. 
F F G okay uh, and we're gonna click below it click below it we're gonna do the same thing okay now we're gonna get these images which it don't have to be those images uh, we're just we're just gonna keep it simple for right now and even gonna break it down like that okay we're gonna go to this T right here we'll click click the T and you see that right there we're gonna give it an outline we're gonna say of red can you see the red around it now and we're gonna make it a little bit bigger let's say we're just gonna buff it up because you want to make your letters to have a two-tone type deal uh, you can have it smooth sharp round uh, you know whatever I don't really care about none of this because it really don't make a difference it's it just don't make a difference I'm sorry boom except all right now from here if you want to grab it and move it see you notice now you got three of them let's undo and boom it's like that now with this one you have to light it all back up again and then click objects and then go down to weld and see once it welded boom it turns it it eliminates the red and then you basically use the big the big font that you had on the outside so basically that weld is on the inside of it let's go back real quick uh, to where it was black okay now that was that font now remember if we go back down here to the bottom follow my icon down here at the bottom if we go back down here we're gonna put it in wire mode you see now it changed to wire mode so now you have two things to cut but once you go up here to weld it instantly makes it that one thing to cut because if you weld anything together it's basically saying we're gonna paste it on top of each other and we're gonna give it a perfect cut instead of giving it inside and outside hope that makes sense but it's a learning experience you will learn to figure it out uh, it comes with it now of course there's other things here like the Apple that's for creating a contour cut me, I really don't use it as much because I kind of do my own little contour cuts. But uh, of course, you have pl plenty of different tools down here on the side. You can make squares. If you want to change the squares, colors, let's change it back to drawing mode. Okay, boom. You could change the square, whatever color you want to change it to. Uh, it doesn't matter. Like, you could put your letters on it if you want to get your letters you can grab your letters put your letters on it if you don't happen to see your letters you come up here to arrange uh, go down here to the bottom to order and we're gonna bring that image to the front and boom you see it right there if you wanted it behind this image you could bring it to the back uh, it's pretty much nothing but remember when you're trying to cut let's say you're gonna grab all this light it up boom you're gonna cut it boom you see of course it's too big for my media but the whole square is on there plus the letters that we're trying to cut so overall I hope this really helps everyone uh, you have a general clip art to the side you have your basic shapes your arrows you have your zoom in mode zoom out modes this actually helps with the node here the node I actually use when I'm trying to get very detailed in your work uh, you got vertical words, you, you got toggle your words to get them to the side. Uh, you have a freehand curve, you have all of these extra little details on the back. And as you see, weld right here kind of connects it. See, if you had a combine here and then you hit the weld, that's what it'll turn the combined into. Uh, you have your rulers here. Of course, on your right side, you have your colors. You have your color fields. You have other different type of colors. The list could go on and on and on. Uh, let's go up here. It says you have your launch button. I really don't know what the hell that is. I don't really use it. Uh, I haven't had a need to use it. You have your paste button. So if you want to copy, let's say you want to copy this image. We just right click. Me, I go to duplicate or you can go to copy. It doesn't matter. Uh, from there, once you duplicate it, boom. And boom, you got two of them. But uh, I only do this if I'm cutting multiple images. That's going to be different colors. Um, 
that's pretty much it. And if my customer want to actually see those, then I do it just to make it easier. Uh, I always copy my image before I cut it because uh, you might mess up that image. And if you change the color of that image, you might mess up and you might need the original color or image that it was. Boom, I do that and I freak my images, add stuff to them all the time. So that comes out with it, of course. If you go to layout up here, you could do your page uh, presentation, which is fairly simple. But everything is fairly simple on here. Of course, if you go to arrange, you have your order button, which we have nothing lit up. So that's why it's not lit up. But we have your line. If you want to line some words specifically straight down the middle, you could do that by hitting the line and vertical centers of it's fairly simple to Microsoft words. So I think I think most people could figure that out. But yeah, this is pretty much the basics of working with this program. And like I said, once you get your image on here from online, boom, vectorize it, send it to the computer. Uh, you can go straight to cut or you could change it to whatever color image that you want. And from there, you're good to go. Uh, I'm going to end this video right here. This is the Vinyl Master Cut. Uh, you can find this pretty much on any website. Let's see, Final Master. Boom, Final Cut Master software. Let me just click it just to see what it showed. Boom, it'll be that first one I got, which is $59.99. I think that's a lot better than the Pro, which is $47. Oh, I said $47. And I'm just letting you know it's late, y'all. But that's $475. Now, on a budget, I would go for that $59.99. Right about now, I can get the Pro. It, it, um, I don't know the extra features in my hold, but right now, it really wouldn't serve me no purpose. But I might just get it just to see what it got, because I might say it says Pro for a reason. So, I don't know. But then again, the one beside is DSR. And it's six seventy five. I'm letting you know straight up. Hell to the no no no. I am not buying that one. I buy the pro, but I am not buying that DSR crap unless it goes down extremely. Uh, I'm sorry, pockets ain't that big for it. I gotta make some shirts to bounce back just to get that four seventy five, which has nothing no. But uh, yeah, man, this this your software. That's what I got. Uh, eBay is where I got majority of my material, my press. My presses, uh, you have Teflon sheets, you have all type of things. Uh, vinyl, I have vinyl down here for days, which I'll show y'all in another video. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please put them in the link down below or comment down below. Uh, of course, I'll try to have this in the link down below of where you can find it at. Uh, as always, Holla at your boy. Stay fresh. Let's close all these tabs up. I'm finna get up out of here. I'm sorry. I'm finna go play the game. Yes, I got that new Call of Duty. It's finna go down. But uh, holla at your boy. The Hustle Hunter. Hustling 365. I'm out. When you need some questions, need something done, holla at your man. Peace.